welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Sandhi in Paninian Grammar. In this lecture, we continue to study Hal Sandhi or consonant Sandhi. Hal Sandhi is the Sandhi that replaces a Hal or a consonant. Hal is a consonant. We have classified Hal Sandhi broadly into two. Ekasthanika Ekadesha and Ekasthanika Dvyadesha. Ekasthanika Ekadesha refers to the state where there is one substituent which is replaced by one substitute, Eka Sthani and Eka Adesha. Eka Sthanika Dvyadesha refers to that state where there is one substituent which is replaced by two substitutes. Ekasthanika Ekadesha is broadly divided into two Purva Nimittaka Ekasthanika Ekadesha and also Para Nimittaka Ekasthanika Ekadesha. And in today's lecture, we are going to see another exceptional case in this regard. First, let us study one more instance of Paranimittaka Ekasthanika Ekadesha. This can be diagrammatically shown in the following manner, where you have A followed by B in close proximity, they are in Samhita mode and in this environment of B following which is para, A is substituted by C, A gets replaced by C. So this is para nimitta, this is eka sthani and this is eka adesha. So this C can be described as para nimitta ka eka sthani ka eka adesha. So A plus B is the input and C plus B is the output. Today we shall study Anu Nasika Sandhi which is another instance of this Paranimittaka Ekasthanika Ekadesha. The sutra that states this Anu Nasika Sandhi is the following Yaro no Nasike no Nasiko Va. 8445 Yaro Anunasike Anunasiko Va. There are four padas in this particular sutra. The first one is Yaraha, six one of Yar, and Yar means all consonants minus H. So Yaraha means in place of Yar. Anunasike is 7 slash 1 of Anunasika. So Anunasike means immediately before an Anunasika sound. Anunasikaha is 1 slash 1 of Anunasika. So this means Anunasika is the substitute. And Va is an indeclinable, it means optionally. The word continued from the previous sutra, na padantat toranam, that word padantat is converted into the genitive case shashti ekavachana padantasya, which qualifies yaraha in this particular sutra. So, six one of padanta is padantasya. Padanta is at the end of the pada. And as we said, this qualifies Yaraha. So Yar should be such that it occurs at the end of the Pada. Then in place of such a Yar, put the substitute, namely the Anunasika. 
this is the meaning of the sixth case and the first case. This is how Padanta is explained. Now let us look at the overall meaning of this sutra. Yaro Nunasike Anunasiko Va. The meaning is the following. Immediately before an Anunasika sound, Yar that is all consonants minus her, which appear at the end of a pada, is substituted by an Anunasika sound and that is also done optionally. I repeat, immediately before an Anunasika sound, Anunasike, Yar, Yaraha, appearing at the end of a pada, padantasya, is substituted by an Anunasika, Anunasikaha, optionally, Va. This particular meaning can be shown in the form of an equation in the following manner. If you have this pada and at the end of this pada a yar occurs and in the following pada the first consonant or first sound is a consonant and is an anunasika then in this environment of an anunasika this year is to be substituted by an anunasika obviously this anunasika is going to be close to this year so it will be having the property of being a nasal which matches with this environment and it also has to be close to the year. So this Anunasika will be close to both the Sthani as well as the Nimitta. And the most important point is that this output Anunasika plus Anunasika, this output is optional. So year plus Anunasika or some other modifications will happen to this year that will be the other optional output generated. Now let us look at the term Anunasika. What is Anunasika? Anunasika is defined in the Ashtadhyayi by Panini at 118 and the sutra reads mukha nasika vachano anunasikaha which has got two words in it mukha nasika vachanaha and anunasikaha what this sutra means is that anunasika is that sound which is produced from both oral as well as nasal cavity together i repeat anunasika is that sound which is produced from both oral as well as nasal cavity together. So C5 that is column 5 in the class consonants is an example of Anunasika sounds. In fact when the word Anunasika is used it invariably refers to these five sounds amongst the consonants. Here are the Anunasika sounds listed together with the place of articulation from which they are produced from the oral cavity plus Nasika. So Nga is Anunasika because it is produced from Kantha in the oral cavity and Nasika. Ya and also Anunasika Ya, Ya. These two sounds are produced from Talu in the oral cavity and Nasika. Then we have Vana produced from Murdhan and also Nasika. Then we have Na and also nasal 
l. These two sounds are produced from danta in the oral cavity and nasika. And finally, m and also v. These are produced from oshta and also nasika. So these are the ananasika consonants. Amongst them, the five na, ya, na, na, ma, they are the ones which are mentioned as the environment, right hand side environment by the word ananasike. And these five plus the other three, they are mentioned as the substitute. Primarily because the positions that these sounds may occupy may not match with the environments required for this rule. Now we can rewrite the examples in the template format in this particular way. So if you have ya, wa, la at the end of a pada like this followed by another pada at the beginning of which appear appears column 5 that means an ananasika. This is a samhita mode and obviously 8445 applies and replaces this substantive namely ya, wa and la consonants by the nasals. Ya, wa and la and C5 remains as it is. Now ya, wa, la are part of yar. Yar is divided into four groups as is visible on this slide. The first one is ya, wa, la, second one is C5, column 5. The third group is that of columns 1, 2, 3, 4 of the classes consonants. And finally, consonants sh, sh, and s. So first we looked at ya, wa, la plus column 5 and the sutra 8445 applies and the output generated is the nasal variety of ya, wa and la plus c5 and this is generated optionally. So ya, wa, la plus c5 would be the other optional output. Then we have C5 plus C5. This is a peculiar case. In this particular environment, C5 is replaced once again by C5. So in a way, we can say that the output is the same as the input, but nonetheless, technically, the output is different. C5 in the output is the substitute. Is there a need for the sutra to apply here? Actually there is no need but technically the sutra should apply here because the Paninian grammatical tradition describes a particular meta rule saying that a sutra applies wherever there is the condition for that sutra to apply. And this is stated also by Parajanyaval Lakshana Pravrittihi. The sutra applies like the rain. The rain does not see the conditions if there is enough water or less water or no water or abundant water etc. It rains. Similarly, the sutra applies wherever the conditions are fulfilled. If we come back and look at these ya, wa, la, we also note that there is one consonant which is missing that is r. Now in this case, the Paninian grammatical tradition is quite clear and it says that there is no nasal variety of r and therefore this consonant r will not become a part of the group of substituents over here, even though it is listed as part of yar. 
we can say that the yar pratyahara is redundant as far as r is concerned. Then we go to class consonants column 1, 2, 3 and 4 that is k, kh, g, gh, ch, ch, j, j, t, th, d, dh, t, th, d, dh and p, p, b, b. When they are followed by column 5 of the class consonants, there are multiple operations that are happening over here. So these C1234, they first get substituted by C3 by the application of Jalam Jashonte. And then this C3 gets substituted by C5 and then the output generated is C5 plus C5. Similar is the case with sh, sh, s plus C5, column 5. So, sh, sh, s will be first substituted by the respective column 3 consonants and then this column 3 consonant will be substituted by C5. So, C5 plus C5 will be the final output generated by the application of this particular sutra and all these outputs are optional. So, when these optional outputs are not uh, generated, the immediately preceding output will be generated. Now, let us take a look at the specific examples. The first one is yavala le plus anunasika and the output generated is y wa le nasals plus that anunasika. Remember, yava le occur at the end of the pada, anunasika sound occurs at the beginning of the subsequent pada. So, here we have aya plus nasti, aya plus nasti, ya is appearing at the end of this pada, aya, aya is a pada. And there is this nasal na that appears at the beginning of this group of padas. So, we have i plus nasti, similarly av plus nasti, similarly al plus nasti. Now, this triggers the sutra yaro no nasike no nasiko va. So, this sutra applies here and substitutes ya, va and la respectively by the nasal varieties of ya, va, la. So, we have i, av and al nasti. This is the output generated. Now, let us look at the next set of sounds, column 1, 2, 3 and 4 plus anunasika and the output generated is column 5 plus that anunasika. So, here we have vach plus nayati. Vach is a separate pada, vach is a separate pada followed by nayati another pada. Cha appears at the end of this pada. So, this is yar at the end of the pada followed by na and anunasika. Obviously, 8445 applies and then the output is generated. But first, following the principle of asiddha, first this cha is substituted by g in accordance with the sutra jalam jashonte. So, we have vag plus nayati as the first output. Then this g because it is still yar is substituted by the anunasika which is the anunasika of this class that is ng. So, we have wang ng is the anunasika of the class C5. So, wang plus nayati and finally wang nayati. This is the output generated. Similarly, we have at plus nasti, at plus nasti and here t appears at the end of the pada and so obviously this is going to become the input for the subsequent sutras. The first sutra applies over here is 8239 Jalam Jashonte 
which substitutes this term by d. So, we have ad plus nasti and once again 8445 applies at this particular stage and we get this d substituted by the nasal of this class namely n and we have an plus nasti, an plus nasti and finally an nasti as the output. Then we have tad plus me. The appears at the end of the pada. Jalam Jashonte has already applied, and so now we have 8445 applying over here, which substitutes this the by the nasal, namely na. So tan and me, that is tan me. Then finally, we have trishtub plus me where bha appears at the end of the pada. Now this bha is substituted first by bha which is a jash by jhalam jashonte. So trishtub me and then this bha is substituted by ma which is the nasal of bha class. So trishtum me and finally trishtum me is the output generated by the application of this particular sutra. Then we have next sh, sh and s plus consonant 5 and we have c3 plus c5 first and then c5 plus c5 as the final output generated. Here are the examples. So, dish plus nasti, dish is a pada at the end of which appears sh followed by this group of padas nasti at the beginning of which appears na. So, we have dish plus nasti. Now, this sh is substituted by the third consonant which is j in this case which is close to sh because of the place of articulation and there is one more rule which applies optionally and so we have sh generated as well. So, dij or dish nasti that is the second step. This is generated by the sutra jhalam jashonte and this sh is generated by the sutra prascha bhrasja srajam raja yajaraja bhrajacha sham shaha. So, dish plus nasti. Then this j and this sh then gets changed into the further substitutions and we have did nasti and then din nasti and din nasti. So, we get din nasti and din nasti as the output generated. Similarly, we have mush plus nasti, jalam jashonte applies and sh gets substituted by d, so mud nasti which is then substituted by n and then we get mud nasti as the output generated. For s, this particular operation will not happen as 8266 applies before the application of this particular sutra following the principle of asiddha. There is a vartika on this particular sutra which is pratyaye bhashayam nityam. This vartika states that in the language immediately before a suffix this sandhi operation is obligatory. The examples that we saw so far those were the examples of yar appearing at the end of the pada and anunasika appearing at the beginning of the subsequent pada. We have already seen that there is something called internal pada which comes into effect 
in the environment of a subsequent pratyaya. Now when this pratyaya follows, if the pratyaya begins with a nasal, then yaro no nasike no nasiko va can apply. But now this Svartika says that this anunasika substitution is obligatory. There is no option available. So we have vach plus maya, vach plus maya, ch is substituted by ga first. So we have vag plus maya, then this ga is substituted by the nasal of ga and then this ga is substituted by nga that is vang and maya that is vang maya is the output that is generated vang maya. Similarly chit plus maya, ta is substituted first by the so we have chid plus maya then this the is substituted by na chin plus maya finally chin maya these are the outputs generated there is no option you can't have chid maya or vag maya that is not possible it has to be vang maya it has to be chin maya this is what is the anunasika sandhi in a nutshell now let us also look at something very peculiar which is called chattva sandhi this is peculiar because there is this other kind of structure that is visible in this sandhi which is also visible in some other types of sandhi namely the Swadhi Sandhi etc. This structure can be stated to be Purva Paro Bhaya Nimittaka Ekasthanika Ekadesha and can be represented in the form of a diagram as shown on the slide where we have A followed by B followed by C. So a B is having the left hand side environment in the form of A and the right hand side environment in the form of C and then B is substituted by D. So this is Purva Nimitta, this is Para Nimitta. So this B getting substituted by D is conditioned by both A and C. So this substitution D is Purva Para Ubhaya Nimittaka Ekasthanika and Eka Adesha. So A plus B plus C in the Samhita mode is the input and A plus D plus C is the output. This is the Sutra which states the Chattva Sandhi which fits into this particular structure. The Sutra is Shashoti 8463. This Sutra has got three Padas. The first one is Shaha. Six one of sh, that is in place of sh. Chaha is one one of ch, that is sound ch. So this is the substitute. So in place of sh, substitute ch. When ati, seven slash one of at. At means all vowels plus ya were and her. So immediately before all these sounds, substitute ch in place of Sh. There are three words that continue in this particular sutra from the previous sutras. Padantat continues from Napadantat Toranam and Padantat is 5 slash 1 of Padanta that is immediately after the end of the Pada and Jayaha which is also 5 1 of Jay. Jay stands for consonants 1, 2, 3, 4 columns and Jayaha stands for immediately after these class consonants. Padantat is the qualifier of Jayaha. Va means optionally. This is also continued from the previous sutra. Now after having put all these meanings together, the sutra would mean something like this. Immediately before at, that is all vowels plus yavara and her, sh coming at the end of a pada 
and also immediately after a j is substituted by a ch and that is also optionally. I repeat immediately before at ati, sh, shaha coming at the end of a pada, padantat and immediately after a j which is jayaha is substituted by a ch that is also optionally. Now, this is the pada at the end of which appears this jai. So, jai is coming at the end of a pada followed by sh which is at the beginning of the subsequent pada followed by an at. So, this is a, this is b and this is c. So, in the environment of j on the left hand side and at on the right hand side, this sh is substituted by this ch. So, j plus sh plus at is the input and j plus ch plus at is the output and remember this is an optional output. So, as the other option j plus sh plus at remains as it is. So, here are the examples. First, we have watch plus shastraya, here ch appearing at the end of the pada, this is a jai followed by sh. Now, this ch first of all undergoes the operation chokuhu, so this is substituted by k first, so vak and shastraya, then jalam jashonte, so k is substituted by g then, so vag plus shastraya. Then one more sutra applies kharicha which substitutes this ga once again by ch and so we get vach and shastraya and then this particular sutra applies which substitutes sh by ch. So we have vach shastraya as the finally derived output. Then we have tasmat plus shastram where t is a jai appearing at the end of a pada followed by sh followed by a which is an at. So, in this case this sh is finally substituted by ch. First this t is substituted by the by jalam jashonte then this the once again gets substituted by ch and then finally this sh is substituted by ch and we get tasmach chastram, tasmach chastram as the finally generated output. Then we have lit shabda and tubh shabda. So, lit shabda here we have t which is a jai at the end of the pada followed by sh, followed by a which is at. So, this t first gets substituted by d, then once again by t and then this sh is substituted by ch and so we get the output lit chabda. This is optional, so we will get the other output namely lit shabda. Similarly, tubh and shabda, first this bh gets substituted by b, then by p and then this sh gets substituted by ch and we get the output tup chabda. Of course, this is optional. So, the other optional output generated is tup shabda, this one. Once again, we have another vartika over here which says chatvam amiti vachyam. The chattva sandhi takes place immediately before am, that is the meaning of this vartika. The scope of the right hand environment is increased from at to am by this particular vartika. This is a statement of the later commentator and this statement tries to account for the change in the course of time. Here is the example, tat plus shlokena where ta is a jai 
followed by sh, followed by l. L is not part of at, but when you say um, l becomes part of it, and so finally we get tach plus chloke na as the output where sh is substituted by ch, and there are jalam jashonte and charatva sandhi and shchutva sandhi they take place. So we have tach shloke na as the finally generated output. Of course, this is optional. To summarize, so far we have studied different instances of ekasthanika ekadesha, purva nimittaka ekasthanika ekadesha first when we looked at shchutva sandhi and shtutva sandhi and interpreted the word shchuna and shtuna. Then we have paranimittaka ekasthanika ekadesha, several instances of this sandhi. Then we also looked at Purva paro bhaya nimittaka ekasthanika ekadesha, shashchoti. Now remains to be studied the other type of hal sandhi namely ekasthanika dvyadesha where there is one substituent which gets replaced by two substitutes. This we shall do in the next lecture. Thank you very much.